I am thrilled to see that you've made it through this weather and through this god-awful traffic uh, to be here tonight. Um, and then, of course, last week many of you were here uh, when we had to move from Wednesday to Thursday because everything was shut down. So you are really being yeoman to be out here tonight on a nasty evening, uh, but for a spectacular evening of, uh, of what I think you're going to find fascinating presentations and some fascinating questions. Um, just to remind you, particularly for those of you who are here for the first time, we are going to be looking at demography all this semester. In fact, to give you just a little idea, I just got back just a couple hours ago from Washington, D.C., where I'm working with the Bipartisan Commission, which is uh, one of the commissions that put forward one of the two deficit reduction packages with Alice Rivlin mm -hmm. and former Senator Peter Domenici. And now they've moved on to looking at health care. And so I've been spending two days with uh, former Senator Tom Daschle of South Dakota and uh, former Tennessee Senator Bob Frist, Bill Frist, and former Ohio Governor Ted Strickland, thinking about what's going to happen to health care. We're going to get into that in detail later in the semester when we look at the question of how does demographic change affect the cost of health care. Um, as we've realized, and, and the premise for this whole course has been, uh, particularly coming from somebody who's studied economics for more than 40 years, uh, economics is important, demography is even more important, and we're going to be doing that all this semester. Um, we're starting today, after last week's introduction, by looking at the family and changes in family structure and what it means, I think we'll see particularly when we get into the questions and answers later on, what are the political implications of all of this? Um, how does the really unbelievable sea changes in the composition of our population going to affect uh, very critical decisions we make about who we're going to take care of and who we might not take care of. So we're going to be doing that by looking at family. We're going to continue by taking a look at neighborhoods and communities next week. We'll follow that up by looking at changes in the city, in the state. We're going to look at big national questions um, about how we're going to pay for Social Security, how we're going to pay for health care, uh, and other uh, conundrums. <coughs> Uh, we're going to look at the workplace. Uh, we're going to look at how generational change actually affects our culture in terms of the visual things we see, changing neighborhoods. Uh, we have a wonderful, uh, one of the foremost architectural photographers in the world who will be with us, Peter Vanderbarker, for that. And then we're going to end up by looking internationally at the whole question of how does demographic change affect other parts of the world? xenophobia of its immigration policy of Japan and how that is affecting their economy. The one-child policy in China, the very rapid population growth in Egypt. We have a stunning set of people to pre present before you on these topics. But this evening, we have two wonderful people who I've known by their work, but not personally for many years. And both of them have been willing to come join us this evening. Ken Johnson comes from the University of New Hampshire, uh, where he's been there for the last four years. He's senior demographer at the Carsey Institute and professor of sociology at the University of New Hampshire. Nationally recognized expert on demographic trends in rural and urban America. Uh, and he's been looking at changes in population, redistribution of population, demographic trends uh, in recreational areas, the impact of immigration, and the relationship between demographic change and the environment. He's incredibly well published in addition to a major book. He has over 150 articles and reports and papers uh, in a variety of journals. I've actually seen him on television because he often appears uh, in various uh, venues from ABC's World News Tonight to NBC's Nightly News, CNN, BBC, National Public Radio, NPR. Um, this is quite an extraordinary person. But it turns out, since we only met personally about 30 minutes ago, um, that we both share something in common. In fact, a lot in common. We were both undergraduates at the University of Michigan. I grew up in Detroit and worked my way through the University of Michigan, working at a Ford Rossenville plant, where I built plant obsolescence into carburetors and alternators during the early 1960s. <laughs> and I was a member of Local 898 of the UAW, a very proud member. 
Ken also grew up in Michigan, in the city of Flint, uh, which is uh, at one time was the headquarters of General Motors Corporation for its Buick division, its Fisher Body division, Chevrolet, AC Delco. His whole family was involved in the auto industry. And Ken himself was a member of local 659, one of the most famous local unions in the UAW history. And so we share that background. And I'm going to learn more about that later. We also have with us Catherine Eden. Uh, Kathy has worked for many years, having taught uh, now at, the, at, at Harvard, before that at Northwestern University, uh, taught at Rutgers. University of Pennsylvania. Uh, she's an expert on urban poverty and family life, uh, social welfare, public housing, child support, non-marital childbearing. Um, she's written numerous books and articles and is well known throughout the country uh, for her work in this area. She's most recently been looking at the whole question of fatherhood. I think we may hear a little bit about that this evening but really focusing at the very micro level on the kind of changes that are occurring in the structure of the family and what it means for both uh, parents and children. Uh, she received her PhD from Northwestern University where I hope within four years my son will receive his undergraduate degree. So we have two wonderful speakers. We're gonna begin with Professor Johnson and then uh, with Professor Eden. As you know, for those of you who've been here before, the rules are we're going to take the first uh, 50 or 60 minutes for their presentations. We'll take a little break, and then it's all you. Uh, we'll have about 45 or 50 minutes, I hope, for questions and answers. Professor Johnson. <laughs> 